Cross Originally, he said, once again, coming to you with World Coming to Christian Center Bible Study Real Talk. Listen, I'm so excited about being here tonight again. I'm so excited to have an opportunity just to share the Word of God with you and just to, again, encourage you, to uplift you, to just build you up in your faith and your confidence and your trust in God. Uh, I'm excited about the time that we're living in. You say, you are? I am. Listen, the Bible says the suffering of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. I, re I really believe that God is setting us up for some great manifestation of his promises and of his blessing. So let's pray and get right into the word tonight. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We love, honor, and adore you for this day. We thank you, Father, for the life, the strength, the health, the protection, and all your promises that you've given unto us, Father, that we abide, dwell, and live in. We thank you, Father, for this word. Thank you, Father, for the strengthening and the, and the encouraging of your body. We thank you, Father, for each and every individual, Father, that has an ear to hear and a heart to receive, and, Father, and a mind to change. Father, we thank you, Father, that our life is growing in you. And because of that, Father, it's getting better and better and better. We thank you and we praise you right now, Father. I thank you, Father, that whatever the enemy has meant for evil, you are turning it for our good. And so, Father, we rejoice. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, tonight's title is, I Think I Can. Now, don't get it confused with the uh, statement, I think I can, which has a connotation of uncertainty. This is, I think I can. And, and we're going to take it from Proverbs 23 and 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, anybody that knows me know that I have a uh, pastor friend in my life uh, that is very strong with the positive thinking. And he's come to the church and he's talked to us about positive thinking. And, and I often go to breakfast or to go to lunch with him. And it's really encouraging because uh, it really keeps me focused on the things that is most important to God, which is the positive thinking. Uh, I want to start off by, uh, but let me, let me say this. Uh, my positive thinking started way before God got a hold of me. Um, when I was in high school, and you know, back then they didn't have middle school. High school was from 8th to 12th grade. And when I was playing football, we used to say a poem. And most of the guys that grew up with me and most of those individuals that played football with me still to this day remember that poem. And way back then, our coach had a, had a revelation, I believe, from God about how a man think. And the poem, and I wrote it down or I had it copied or got it off the internet. Uh, it's, it's all in the state of mind by Walter D. Wintle. And I want to read it for you at the beginning, and then we'll read it at the end, and then we'll dive right into the message. But this is the poem. It's all in the state of mind. It says, if you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win but don't think you can, it's almost a sense you won't. If you think you lose, you're lost. For out in the world, you're fine. Success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. For many a race is lost, or even a step is run, and many a coward's failed, even his work begun. Think big and your deeds will grow. Think small and you'll fall behind. Think that you can and you will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You gotta think how to rise. You gotta be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later the man who wins is the man who think he can. Again, before every football game, from the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, 
before every football game, we used to quote this poem. We used to say it out loud as a football team and really stuck in our mind and really uh, motivated our action because of how we thought. You know, last week we talked about a new mindset. And there were three scriptures that I want to just refresh your memory on that we talked about. The first one was in Romans 12 and 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. That word transformed means to change. It's a Greek reference number 3339. 3339, to change by the renewing of your mind. The second scripture was in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. It says, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That means we have to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. That, that word imagination, casting down imagination, imagination means that consciousness or that reasoning or that concept, casting down every consciousness, every reasoning, every concept, every thought that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And the third, third scripture is Ephesians 4 and 23. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I don't think that we really understand the vitalness of our thinking or right thinking when it comes to our response and action to God's word. Uh, I think sometimes we just think that our action is a response to whatever. No, your action is a response to your thinking. That means that you're going to act more likely like you think. And that's how, that's why it's so important that we just change our mindset and begin to think like we're supposed to think. And then in verse, and the fourth one is Philippians 4 and 8, and we're not going to read the whole scripture, but it starts off with, finally, brethren. And they start talking about these things, and it says, think on these things, whatsoever thing is just, pure, honest, lovely, of good report. Think on these things. We have to make sure, again, I think I shared it before, and, and I don't know if you understand the importance and the vitalness of how we uh, uh, orchestrate and contain or uh, mold our way of thinking to line up with God in this time of season we're in right now. You know, we, 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 it's so easy to get caught up in the newscast and, and in the negativity of what's going on and all the tragedies that are happening. But uh, I, I promise you, if we don't dwell on that negative aspect of what is going on in the world. We are in it, but we're not of it, and begin to see the greatness of God's glory that's going to manifest itself because of what's going on. I, I really believe that we're going to come back as a body of Christ, a believer, stronger, more confident, and more on fire in the things of God than ever before because of what we've gone through. You know, uh, the other week, not last week, but the other week, we talked about trust in God. And one of the scriptures we used was Isaiah 26 and 4. It says, trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is an everlasting strength. But if you read one verse above that, in Isaiah 26 and 3, it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. You know, there's such a correlation with God's peace. And yes, I'm going to always reference the fruits of the Spirit, peace 
and your mind staying on him. You cannot say I'm in peace when your mind is wandering back and forth. A double-minded man is unstable. We understand that. If we look at 2 Thessalonians 2 and 2, it, it, it's so important that we, again, just embrace this mindset of, of I think I can, not I think I can, like uh, I'm not quite sure, but no, I think, I think what? I think God is able. I think God is awesome. I think God is great. I think God has empowered me. I think God is for me. I think God loves me. I think no weapon form against me shall prosper. I think that if God be for me, who can be against me? I think that great is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. I think that God rule and reign over all. I think that the end will be glorious because the end has already been established. Because I think I can. We got to get to the point that we settle it before we face it. No, the Bible says God won't allow us to be tempted or tested above that which we are able to bear. I think think. And because I think, I can. I think. I, I, I don't know what you're dwelling on. I don't know what you're meditating on. I don't know what you are confessing. But if your confession, if your meditation, if the thing that you are dwelling on don't change how you think, in line with what God desires and has promised for us to live and to walk in, then you need to change what you're meditating on. You need to change what you're confessing because none of that makes a difference if it doesn't change how you think. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I promise you. Uh, and again, there's always exception, but I promise you, nine times out of ten, your reaction is in correspondence to your thinking. I promise you. Now, when you react without thinking, that's something different. But if you have a moment to think about it, that's going to shape your action. Yes, yes. And what we want to do, we don't want a a hastily action. We want a calculated, precise step that God has orchestrated for. I, I know the steps. I know the thoughts that he thinks towards us. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us an ex See, we want to make sure that the steps of the righteous man is being ordered, not being led by the flesh or by the unrenewed mind that is trying to rule and reign in our life. Again, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 2. And I, I really, really, I really pray that you read, you know, when, when, when you think about all of these scriptures that I'm giving, and, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm giving them quick and, and I'm, you know, picking them out and, and sharing them with you. But, you know, the rule is, if I read a scripture, read the chapter. Read all around it so that you can get a better concept and understanding of what he really intended for us to understand. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We got to know. We got to understand. We got to invest in the, 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 the dissecting of God's word so that it can be a thought in our mind regardless of what we're facing in our in our life. We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk by the appearance. We don't walk by what is going on around us. We walk by what we have received as a word from God that we believe. Again, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 2 says that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by words nor by letter as from us, as that day, the day of Christ is at hand. And when you read this Second Thessalonians chapter 2, you start reading about 
It's, it's prophesying things that, that is even going on right now. But it says the day of Christ is not at hand because uh, uh, there's, there's some things that got to happen. First, there's going to be a, a great falling away of, of, of people. We sin it, but it ain't happened. And then the Antichrist is going to be revealed. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying you just need to realize and recognize that we are much closer than we were before. And I believe that where we are and what we're going through in this season is a part of God's, God's not God's desire, but it's the part of what God knew in his plan. You know, when we look at Jesus, and, and, and again, we're talking about the renewing of our mind. We're talking about uh, uh, how a man thinks in his mind and in his head and, and in his heart. We, we're talking about making sure that our thoughts line up with the word of God and not with the, the opinions and the effects of this world. We, we got to not allow uh, so many things that becomes a uh, have been, be, uh, uh, been a distraction in our life to start becoming a part of our life even again. We're coming into a new era, a new season. And this new season has to be better than the old season we're coming out of. Again, when Jesus rose from the dead, when Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to his disciples. In Luke 24, he says some things and, and, and you know, they, 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 they witnessed him, a few of them, you know, prior to his showing himself to the multitude of his disciples. And they was all gathered together and they were talking. And in Luke 24, verse 36, it says, And as they spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto him, Peace be unto you. There's never going to be a settling of your mind if there's no peace in your heart. Peace. We talked about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace. Love, joy, and peace. If, if you don't have love, joy, and peace, you're not ready for long-suffering. Or if you don't have the right measure or the right degree or the right amount or the right maturity or the right growth of love, joy, and peace, then it's going to be very hard for you to contain your mind when it comes to patience and long-suffering. So again, he said, peace be unto you. He said, but they was terrified, terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Verse 38 says, and he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? How many you know that trouble and, and how you think go hand in hand? It says, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your heart? And then he says something that, that you know, and, and we can criticize them because, you know, in the sense that they walked with them and, and they heard him, you know, from his mouth and, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, as, as people would say. He says, behold my hand and my feet. It is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see me have. And, and at that time, they realized who it was. You know, how many of us have had an experience with Jesus or have a experience with God in our past, but then we find ourselves in the midst of a trouble and begin to fear and let worry come into our minds or uh, wrong thoughts come into our mind. And, and, and Jesus is saying it to us like he said it to them. Behold my hand and my feet. Handle me and see. He said, did you not know that I, you know, we're just coming out of, out of Easter, putting ourselves in remembrance of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, do we still need to remind ourselves that he is 
or risen king? Do we still need to remind ourselves that no weapon formed against us shall prosper? Do we still need to remind ourselves that he got up with all power? We, we remind ourselves, remind ourselves. We've got to get to the point that we are realizing that, that, that I need to start thinking more in line with his word. We have enough of his word in us for victory. Say, so, but I just got born again, then that's all you need for victory, because that's all you're going to face. Say, so, but I've been I've been born again for 20 some odd years, then you got a lot of words. That's why you got a lot of challenges, because now you get an opportunity to prove all the words you have. One of my favorite mantras that I've said for years is the word of God is only an assumption until it's proven, and it's only proven in the midst of a test. You can say whatever you want to say, but it's not real until it's tested and you pass the test. When you say, you know, you can say God, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, as long as you don't have a need. But as soon as you have a need, then he really become your provider when he meets that need because of your faith, trust, and confidence in him. And you can't get that thinking wrong. Again, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And let not him expect to receive anything from the Lord. Again, I'm so excited about where we in, where we are as, as a body of Christ. I'm so excited about uh, this new opportunity that God has granted to us. But I, I want us to, to, to get to a place that I know, not, not just, just have a notion, but I know that my God is able. I know that great is he that lives in me. You know, people wonder why I'm like I am. It's not by accident. It's not by coincidence. People wonder why uh, losing is not an option. Why? Because winning is in my DNA. Not because of anything other than that's how I think. It's not over until I win. Don't tell me what I can't do. Just tell me what God wants me to do. And if God wants me to do it, it's a done deal. Why? Because I'm not going to stop until it is done. That's how I think. Because I think that way, I can. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I think that way. That, that, no, that didn't mean I can do everything. I just can do anything he asks me. Why? Because I know who empowers me. You got to think that way. I think I can. I think I can. I'm excited, y'all. Again, 1 Peter. And, and, and you know, let's, let's read 1 Peter chapter 1. And, and again... I know that we have some quiet time, you know, throughout the day. Uh, I know you're busy. I checked your schedule, and I know that uh, your schedule has been altered and interrupted because of uh, this situation that we may find ourselves in. But let me say this. Never allow your schedule to be so busy that you lose sight of the value of this time God has given us or allowed us to have to get in a better position for him. Because again, there's been so many distractions, so many activities, so many things that that, that we've allowed. And, and let me say this, some of it wasn't, you know, directed by just our desire. But you know what? When we have a love for our kids, then we allow their schedule to dictate our time. When we have a love for our spouse, sometimes we allow their schedule to dictate our time. When we have a love for our parents, sometimes we allow their schedule to dictate our time. But when we have a love for God, then we allow his schedule to dictate our life, not just our time, but our life. And that's where God is trying to get back to is, listen, 
I know about your, your kids. I know about your spouse. I know about your parent. But do you know I know what's best for all of you? And I think that that's where we have to get back is now. Start allowing God to in, interrupt our life by dictating our steps. I'm so excited. Again, 1 Peter chapter 1. And, and uh, I want to go on with, uh, let's, let's, let's read, starting at verse 2, it says, The elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the Father, and, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us against, again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Again, we're coming out of Easter. And I don't, and like I said on Sunday, I don't believe that this situation, and that's what I'm going to call it, a situation, we want to make it, because, listen, I'm not going to glorify the works of the enemy, and I'm not going to give such a, a importance to it. I'm not saying that we don't do the necessary thing, but if we don't speak more highly of God than it, then we are giving more strength to it than we're doing to God. Whatever you focus in on, see, this is a part of positive thinking. Whatever you give attention to, you give strength to. See, whenever you give attention to the issues, of the, the situation, the, the, the circumstances that the enemy brings to your life and not bring emphasis to the greater one, the power, the strength, the, the word, the, the, the direction, the, the destiny. See, this is the thing. I don't worry about the step when I know my end has already been established. No matter how many times, how many steps, how long it takes, if I know that the end is where God has established for me, then I'm willing to make as many steps. I, you know, one of my uh, examples I use a lot of times because, you know, people, we, 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 we put more, we put so much stock on, on, on the steps and the trials and the tribulation. And, but, but when you put the emphasis on the reward, when you put the emphasis on on the destiny, when you put the emphasis on on the outcome, then you don't worry about the step. I, I tell people all the time. I say, you know, if I tell you I need you to to dig a four by four by four ditch, and I'm gonna give you a, a spoon to dig, with, you look at me and say, you crazy? I ain't digging no ditch four by four by four with no spoon. And if I tell you I'm gonna give you Four million dollars, you said, where the spoon? Because you're not looking at what it takes. You're looking at the rewards that's going to come after you do it. That's what you got to do when you're looking at the trouble that you're in. Don't worry about the trouble, but the trouble of this present time cannot be worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. I'm telling you, you go through this with a smile on your face. Count it all joy when you fall in. Why? Knowing this. That the trying of your faith worketh patient. But let patient have a perfect work so that you can be complete, entire, wanting nothing. That's how you got to think. You're never going to press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling if you don't think the prize of the high calling is worth the pressing. See, if, if I look at the prize and I see it's valuable much more than the present, then I press with a smile on my face. I'm telling you, that's what we got to do. That's what we got to, we got to focus in on the destiny. We got to focus in on the outcome. We got to focus in, you know, you know, the, the, the furnace may be hot when you put the metal in, but when the metal come out, it come out as pure gold. It come out purified. Listen, it's the fire that purify the gold. It's the fire. It's the fire. See, we want to think that Jesus could have done it a different way. You know, Jesus said, if it be possible, take this cup from me. 
He knew that in order for us to be redeemed, he had to suffer. He had to go through the agony of death, the grave, the cross, and, and, and then hell itself and then get up. But all of that was worth it. Why? Because it brought all of us back into a relationship with the Father. See, that's the thing that we got to do is that he said for the joy, he counted all joy for the joy in knowing that what he went through will bring deliverance for all of those that choose Jesus as the Lord. I'm saying that's how we have to look at this. We got to think this way. We got to say, no, 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 no. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, and this too shall pass, because great is he that is in me than he is in the world. No, 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 no. God won't allow me to be tempted or tested above that which I'm able to bear. That means he's put enough in me to go through whatever I'm facing. That if I couldn't face it, I wouldn't have the challenge. And because I got the challenge, I have the strength. I got to think this way. I think, and because I think this way, I can. You got to believe that. Yes and amen. Again, let's continue to read. Uh, verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that faded not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation changed ready to be revealed in the last time wherein you greatly rejoice Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation. See that? It's just a season, people. But we got to rejoice in this season knowing this. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praises and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love. In whom though now you see him not yet believe, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Glory, the manifested presence of God. Glory. See, people need to see God's glory in and on your life. The manifested presence. They can't see that when you're worried, when you're fearful, when you don't think you can. Mm, mm, mm. It says receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation or the changing of your soul, of which salvation the prophet has inquired in such diligence, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what and what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow us. See, this is the thing. There, there was no glory without no suffering. Verse 12, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us that did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost set down from heaven, sent down from heaven with things the angels desire to look into. Here we go. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. That word loins in the Greek, 3751, it means procreated po 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 power. That means that it's that reproducing power, that procreated power. That means that you have to gird up the loins that reproduce in your mind. See, every, every part of your mind doesn't reproduce. Some things are there for a moment. Some things are there for a second. But there are some things in your mind that was set to reproduce. To, to to grow, to enlarge, to 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 uh to be a seed for others to spring forth from. And that's what the word of God is supposed to be. But if you're not feeding that that reproductive mindset in you, that word that you know, see, fear 
reproduce, but faith reproduce. And you're feeding yourself with fear that's reproducing other fear, but you need to be feeding yourself with faith, your mind, that reproduce other faith. Yes, yes, and amen. Again, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation, at the revealed knowledge of Jesus Christ. At the revealed knowledge of Jesus Christ. Again, I'm, 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 I'm thankful that we have this time. You know, I, I don't think that it could have come in any better time in our lives. I, I believe that not the world, but the body of Christ. See, I, I don't associate the body with the world. Even though there may be some similarity, I'm telling you, we as the body of Christ was separate in our thinking. We as the body of Christ was, 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 was divided in our belief, not just, listen, there's going to always be some differences, but I'm talking about in the core value of what we believe, we was divided. We, 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 we did not hold true to the foundational standard that was set in the beginning. We allow the cares and the deceitfulness and the desires that is in the world to shape, to mold, to inspire our thinking and motivate our action. And I believe that it could not have come in a better time that God allowed us now, this time, to put a stop to that, 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 that bad thinking to readjust our mind and to focus back in on what is most vital to him. I think, why? Because I can. Why? Because when we come out of this, the glory, the manifested presence of God is going to be revealed to those that are seeking an answer, a real, a true, a, 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 a viable answer, not, not, not that smoke and mirror, not that, that, that image and, and, and mirage that so many Christians in times past used to walk in. No, 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 no. We're talking about and, and, and power, walking in the dunamis, the, the power of God, that gets results. Why? Because I think I can. Getting results. Not, not, not questioning whether it's going to happen. I know it will happen. Why? Because it's the word of God. It's the desire of God. It's the will of God. I'm not doing, I'm not trying to plan my own thing. I'm in line. I'm yielded. I'm surrendering my life to the will, the plan, and the, the, the life of God that he's placed in me. And because of that, it can't help but to succeed. I think I can. I think I can. I, I, I won't, you don't have to do it because again, unless you're led by God, but if you are led by God, every morning when you get up, I think I can. That means that whatever you face, I think I can. That means that I won't face anything that I have. I don't have the strength to master, to conquer, to win. I think I can. Whatever challenge, whatever problem, whatever situation, whatever circumstances come my way, I think I can. What do I think? I think of the finished work of Jesus. I think that I'm a child of God. I think that I'm beloved of the Most High. I think that I've been empowered by the Holy Ghost. I think that great is he that lives in me. I think that if God be for me, who can be against me? I think I can. Because of that, I will win. I will conquer. I will master. I will overcome. I will press towards the mark. I will not quit, and because I will not quit, I will not be defeated. Let's read the poem one last time, and we'll call it a night. 
I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I believe that again, a change, a change from the inside out, a change. See, this is the thing. Change your heart, change your mind, change your action. Change your heart, change your mind, change your action. Change your heart. Or let, let, let's say it like this. Change your desire, change your will, change your motion. Change your desire, change your will, change your motion. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win and you don't think you can, it's almost a sense you won't. If you think you lose, you're lost. For out in the world, you're fine. Success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. For many a race is lost, or even a step is run. And many a coward's failed, or even his work's begun. Think big and your deeds will grow. Think small and you'll fall behind. Think that you can and you will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You got to think high to rise. You got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is the fellow who thinks he can. It's all in the state of mind. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We love, honor, and adore you. We thank you, Father, for this time, this season, this day, this hour. But most of all, we thank you, Father, for this life that you desire to live through us. Father, the Bible says our life is not our own. It was bought with a price. That means that we're not living a life to please ourselves. We're living a life that is pleasing to you. So we give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you all the praise. We thank you, Father, for you being our all in all. Every day, our protection. Every day, our provision. Every day, our wisdom. Knowing what to do when we may not know what to do. We thank you. We praise you right now, Father. Father, all of that comes by the leading of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't come because we do what we want to do. It comes because we are obedient to your spirit. So we declare, decree, and proclaim today and forevermore, have thy way, O Lord. Father, we can do all things through Christ because our dependency, our strength, our reliance is in and on you. Not to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of you who has made us able ministers of the gospel. Not according to the letter, but according to the spirit. Father, we love you. We love you. Father, we lift you up. How great is our God. How great is our God. Father, your word said, if thou be lifted up, you'll draw all men. How great is our God. Nobody, nobody's greater, nobody stronger, nobody's mightier, nobody more powerful, nobody's more able. How great is our God. And Father, you're not just our God, you are our God. Father, a father that wants the very best for your children. For the word teaches us now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So, Father, we lean on to our own understanding. We let go of our mindset so that we can embrace, embrace the mind of Christ, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, 
but made himself of no reputation, but humbled himself and became obedient even unto the cross. Have thy way, Father. Let us become obedient even to the end. Not being weary, not retreating, not stopping, but pressing towards the mark. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Revive us this day. Father, put a charge in us that cannot be denied. Let a fire burn in us that cannot be quenched. Put a motivation in us, Father, that will not be stopped. Father, we thank you. Father, let a fervency build up in us that puts you first in all that we do. Father, this is our prayer unto you, Father. A prayer of magnifying, glorifying, exalting your kingdom. A prayer that says, greater is our God, great and awesomely to be praised. Father, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. And we do this in the name above all other names. How great is the name of Jesus. And I'm not ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ. For it is a name unto salvation, a name unto change, a name unto deliverance, a name above all other names. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I want to challenge you to, to make sure that your prayer is a prayer of exaltation, a prayer of manifestation, of, 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 of praising and worshiping and honoring of God, and not a time that you use to deal with the issues and the cares of this world. Listen, I know we pray for all of those in authority, and we pray for the well-being and the safety of people in general, but that's after we have gone to God first and given him. You know, it's, 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 it's so, I guess, unusual for me to, to think that we would go to God, who is the great I am, Jehovah, El Shaddai, and allow him to be the second thought of our admiration and worship and thought. Listen, I know we should pray for it everybody and anybody. But you know, when Jesus was teaching his disciples on how to pray, he said, pray in this manner, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Listen, before he dealt with anything else, he gave homage, worship, and praise and adoration to the great I am. And I think that that's what we ought to do. I'm not saying that we shouldn't pray for one another. I'm not saying we shouldn't pray for the protection and, and, and the restoration of things that God desired to happen. But I'm saying let's make that a second aspect of our prayer after we have lifted him up, magnified him, and glorified his name. Amen. Amen and amen. Just give God a great big hallelujah and a shout of victory because victory is ours. I don't care what it look like, what it sound like, what people say or don't say. I know what God has ordained, predestined, and established. I read the end of the book and the end of the book says we win. See, it doesn't matter what happened in the middle of the chapters. It doesn't matter what happened at the beginning the middle, it only matters what happened at the end. And at the end, we win. Victory is ours. We don't wait until the battle is over. We shout because victory is ours. Amen. Now it's time for us all to be able to participate in this worship time of giving. Listen, if you are, are, are giving, you can go to our website, worldcovenant.org. And you can select Giveify or PayPal. 
and, and it will walk you through the process of being able to give. Go ahead and, and, and you know, utilize those technologies that makes it easy to, uh, to uh, give. And, and again, allow God to direct your giving. I really believe it. I think I said it uh, on Sunday, and I will probably continue to say it until we come together again, is that utilize this time as a time of great seed sowing. It's all, oh, Pastor, all you want is our money. No, 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 no. The Apostle Paul said, not because I desire fruit or a or, or gift from you, but I desire fruit to abound in your heavenly account. It has not changed. It still holds true today. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with what measure you meet with all this shall be measured to you again. Listen, we can talk about whatever we want to talk about, but the 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 the, the law of of giving still abound in God's kingdom. You know, God so loved the world that he gave. And in his giving of his son, he reaped many sons and daughters to his kingdom. Uh, I want to encourage you that there's a blessing, there's an abundance. Of, 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 of prosperity that God wants to deliver into your hand, but he's going to require of you first to give, and it shall be given unto you. Again, you can also mail your, your tithes and offering and love offering to the church. You can mail it to 3777 Troop Smith Road, Conyers, Georgia, 30094. Again, we love you. Again, me and Co-Pastor Wante truly miss you, and you know we can't wait until we are all back together. Stay connected, stay motivated and inspired. Know that uh, there's still a, a a great work. When I say work, purpose, vision that God has placed on us as a body of believers to accomplish. And I believe that when we come together, we're going to be better equipped and better prepared and in a better mindset to do what God has called us to do. Love you. Until next time. Again, this is Pastor Reginald Ezel, World Coming Christian Center, saying we love you and be safe and enjoy God's life. Amen. Good night.